So when Christians rejoice in, in their afflictions, in their pain, in their cancer, in their suffering, it is because they understand that it is not God who gave them these things. You see, these things came to them because they came to them. But God allowed it to happen to some extent to reveal something to them about them. First, I'll give you an example. Let's say that you have two people, a man and a woman who are married, who are both working, and they have no time for their children. They have no time to teach their children anything, to disciple them, to teach them about God. Which means that actually they have no time to love their children because to love someone is to tell them the truth about salvation. There is no greater love than to teach someone about Christ. Because how, how have you loved them? By giving them clothes, giving them food, giving them money to buy things, and they die to go to hell. You haven't loved that person because in the end they went to hell. So God, hoping on and, 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 and looking to make a man and a woman more loving, may allow the man's enemies to hurt the man so that the man now is in hospital. The man now is not able to work and because he's not able to work, his family surround him. And now because his family surround him, he's able to teach them about God. If he was not sick, he couldn't be able to. If he wasn't crippled, he wouldn't be in hospital and he wouldn't be surrounded by his kids all the time. And because he's surrounded by his kids all the time, he's able to teach them something. He's able to teach them about God. But it is only through understanding that since he's crippled and he doesn't really have anything to do, he might as well just use the time to teach the children about God. But if he's angry that he's crippled, he should be out there making money. He will never be able to do the things that he was supposed to do to begin with. So when the man starts to understand that, wow, since I've been crippled, I've actually been more closer to my kids than I've ever been in my life. And then he says, wow, blessed be this accident which has happened to me because without this accident, I would have never been close to my kids. And now, because he said, blessed to God who has allowed this accident to happen. He's able to rejoice in, his, in, in himself being crippled. Do you see that? So this man is able to rejoice in his disadvantage, in his accident, which has actually put him in a wheelchair because for the first time he's able to understand the value of family, the value of children, because now they surround him. And they want to hear something from him. And because he is a Christian, all he can tell them is about God. But if he was busy working, working all the time, whether or not he was saved and born again, he never got the time to reveal this which he knows, this spirit which he has in his, whom he has in his heart, to reveal the spirit to his children. Do you see that? It is not God who crippled them. It was probably him, you know or someone, or an accident happening, but God was able to use it for good. So the joy does not come from the fact that the man does not feel any pain in his body. The joy comes from the man understanding that now he's able to do the things that he should have been doing before for the glory of God. Or even if it's just for him knowing and, and loving his family. That's where the joy comes from. That's why even though there's pain, but he's able to rejoice in it. You see, another example. Let's say you are a, a basketball fan. You love basketball. You're a football fan. You like, you know, every, every other weekend you go to watch your favorite sport. And you're Christian. You're born again, but you love these things. You see, so one Friday when you were, you know, there's this big game that is going to happen over the weekend. You couldn't stop talking about it since it was announced. You know, you've been talking about it since last month. And your friends, everyone's going to be there, and then everybody's excited. And on a Friday, you catch a flu. The game is supposed to happen on a Saturday. On a Friday, you catch a flu. The flu becomes so bad that you cannot even get out of bed. You see, your whole body is painful. Everywhere is painful. The medicine doesn't work. Why don't they give you this? Not work. And you are angry that you're going to miss a game because of a flu. This flu. Cast this flu. 
you know, I should be going out from Friday, I mean, on Saturday, you know, enjoying game with friends. It was going to be fun. And everyone's going to be a blast. All my friends are going to be there. But the car that you were supposed to drive in, you know, the car that you're supposed to drive in to go to the game, falls into the accident, and everyone dies in the car. So when you're expecting to hear you from your friends, whether through WhatsApp, you know, in your group, or phone call, or text messages, oh, the game was great, you missed out and all that, what you hear is their parents wailing over the loss of their children because they died in an accident on their way to the game, which you were supposed to go in the same car. Now, are you not going to say, blessed be this flu, because without it, I'll be dead. So, you're sick, you're in pain, but you're happy about it. Because it is this sickness, this flu, which has saved you. This is how Christians are able to rejoice in pain and suffering, because they have understanding. But this understanding can only be revealed when a man does not push away God, and cast him because the minute when you suffer you push away God and say God will never want me to to suffer God will never want me to be sick God will never want me to be poor God will always want me to be rich and all that then you will never get this understanding of why you became poor why you were born poor why you were suffering why you were born into suffer you will never understand why because the only one who can give you that understanding you have pushed him away do you see that so this is why in joy, in suffering, in life, in death, we must always worship God. Because it is not God who kills, it is the evil one who kills, even if it's through people. So, But it is God who can reveal to us understanding of why our life were the way that they were. Because eventually, any man who has ever you know, went through suffering, whether he was or he was Christian or not, and later in life, God, you know, got saved or got born again, and then God revealed himself to him. He gets to understand even the evils which were happening to him, which were making him question why was he even alive in the first place. And he's able, in fact, in hindsight, rejoice in the pain that he used to have in the past. That because those pains, those sufferings made the man made him the man that he is today. And it was God who made sure that the pain were not too much that they killed him. Or they put him in despair or they made him exit, they took his own life. But he let him grow to a point where he was able to reveal himself to him. And now he has understanding and is able to share this experience with other people. That is how Christians are able to rejoice in suffering, because they have understanding. But when you are atheist, or you are a non-believer, or you are something, all you really ever want is to make it, and to be successful. And because that is your main aim in life, you can never understand suffering or anything going wrong in your life. You see, you can never have it, because you think that life is good only when things are good. But you don't understand that life can be good even when things are bad because you could be saved from something which is worse than what you're going through. You understand? So that's, that's, that's the thing. Because you could look at a nice woman, very beautiful woman, and because you have all these nice things and you believe that you deserve her, and she rejects you, why you want to make her your wife? And you ask yourself, why would a woman reject someone like you? And you, and you start to lose, you know, confidence. You start to think that there's something wrong with you, that you're cursed. But you find out that that woman is actually HIV positive. So by rejecting you, even though you were hurt, your, your esteem was hurt, it was a blessing. Because if you were one to her, you would have slept with her and you would have caught her HIV. But all these things come from understanding God. Understanding His will. That His will is good. He will never want to hurt you. But He will always be the one who will explain and make it 
understandable to you why you hurt, why you're in pain. Do you see that? Even Paul, when when Paul was probably the you know the greatest brain, uh, the greatest brain that possessed understanding of God at you know at his time during his time, he had a thorn in his flesh, and he asked that Christ remove the flesh and the, um, the thorn, but Christ said no, he's not going to remove the thorn. You see, and then Christ said that his strength is he, he you know he manifests his his power through weaknesses. That's what I'm trying to say. Because at the time, Paul, because of who he was, because of his power, a lot of people could have ended up worshiping Paul because of his miracles, because of the things that he was doing. You know, because of his power. But his, his, his power was not really his power. It was the power of the Holy Spirit through him. You understand? But people could have ended up, you know, celebrating him and worshiping him. But the thorn in the flesh, which was not given by God or by Christ, was given by a messenger of messenger of pain or whatever, something like that. The, the, the thorn in the flesh of Paul was to humble him. Because when people hear that Paul has a thorn in the flesh and he's unable to get it out by himself, they no longer think that he's some kind of demigod or semi-god or whatever. Because he's also human. He's also able to suffer from things that he cannot cure himself from. So that they're going to start taking him as a human being. But if, if every suffering that comes to him was just able to get rid of, eventually he could, he, he could be raised to the level of a God. And because he also had a body like ours, he can end up being corrupt. Because this body is corruptible. And in the end, he may lead himself to his own destruction. But that which was meant to hurt him humbled him. To understand that he's also just as human, like everybody, he gets sick like everybody else. And even though he was able to cure others, he cannot be able to cure himself. Why? Because God does not will that he be cured because he wants to humble him, to keep him human, to make him not believe that he's some kind of demigod or something. Because remember what happened when he got bitten by a snake and the people thought he was going to die. And he didn't die, and they started saying that he was a god. You see? So for God to make sure that he does not actually believe that he is a god, he lets him suffer like everyone else. So not that it is God who makes him suffer. It is whoever, the enemy who makes him suffer, but God allows it to happen so that he could see himself a man, and he can always go to God to ask you know, for release from pain. You understand that. So when you understand that, you can understand why Christians are able to rejoice in suffering. This is why in our sufferings, in our pain, in our poverty, in our sicknesses, we must never kiss God. We must seek His will with what is happening in our lives. And He will always reveal His will. And it is through, after, it is through this understanding of His will that we are able to rejoice even in our sufferings. That is how to truly become Christian in a world where evil and good dwell side by side. You see? So that is all that I have to say about this, how Christians are able to rejoice in suffering. So if you like content like this, you can subscribe to my channel so you can receive content like this. Thank you for listening.